Once you download the product, you'll be greeted with this blend file that has all of the trails in it. You can see if I play this, all of the trails are here. And if I just go open this asset library, we have all of our trails in here. I have mine categorized into three different sections. Default, which is basically just the basic trail with any materials or anything. Elemental, which I think is pretty self-explanatory. And Particle, which is just any of them that emit particles. But you can organize these however you want in your asset library. And to get this into your asset library, all you have to do is go to edit, preferences, and then in file paths, you'll see this asset library section. I have a couple, um, but you can create a new one or if you already have one in user library, you'll just set this path to wherever you want your asset browser to be. And then make sure you have the this blend file in that folder. You can see mine is right here, autotrail.blend. Make sure it is in your user library path. And if you want to use these trails, just open your blend file where you want to use them. And then on the object that you want to use them, you go into edit mode. And I want the trail to be on this edge of the katana. So I'm going to see, select an edge there. Um, and then I'll hit control G, assign to new group. And if I go to the vertex group, you can see it's there. I'll rename this to trail. And then if I want to use one, let's say I want to use the fire trail one. I just drag this in and it'll automatically be selected. So I can just go to modifiers and then select the katana. And then in trail group, I'll type trail. And it has to be the exact name of that vertex group that we created. So now if I hit play and move this around, you can see we've got our katana with a fire trail. That looks pretty good, I think. And we've got some controls in our modifiers. This is a more simple trail, so there's not that many. We just have duration and then trim. This makes it shorter. I would recommend using this trim value if your duration is lower than five. You can see it says that in the description of this. Just because if you lower the duration less than five, the smoothing of the trail gets kind of messed up. And then you also have some resolution controls. I can go into wireframe and see I have this at a pretty high resolution right now, but you can turn this way down. And this one in specific also has a fire hue slider and it has an animation speed parameter that you can change. So let's look at some other trails too. Bubble trail, I think that one's kind of fun. So I'll drag that in, select my katana, and then type trail for the trail group. And if I play it, we now have these bubbles coming out. It's kind of hard to see in EV, but we have <laughs> the density set pretty high, but we've got a bunch of bubbles popping. As you can see, it's pretty performant. I'm not dropping any frames, even when you know spawning all of these particles. I think that trail is pretty fun. Let's do another. We can do the hard edge trail. I think this one looks really nice. I'll drag it in, select the katana, type trail, restart my animation and play. And there we go. Like I said, I think this one looks really nice. This is one of my favorites. Just simple, but good. And it works as you can see with rotation, uh, movement, and you can even scale your object. Um, it's kind of hard to see there, but you can scale it and the trail will follow. The only trail that I think needs like a decent amount of explaining is the blank points trail. For this one, I'm gonna go into solid mode, select my katana type trail and then if i play it you can see we just have a bunch of points but these won't render at least not in eevee you can see if i go into material preview they're just gone in cycles they'll show up as um these spheres which can be useful if you want but if not what you can do is you, there's this collection parameter so let's say i want a trail of suzanne's i'll just make um a couple of them here and i'll move these to a new collection i'll call it monkeys all right and then I can just turn that collection off. And if you can't see that option, just go up here to the restriction toggles and turn on this check mark. And then you can turn these on and off and that will turn them off on render and in viewport. And then go to your trail, go to the modifiers, collection, and select that collection. And now we have a trail of multicolored Suzanne's. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is a very versatile trail, very customizable, probably the most customizable because you can make it, you know, whatever you want. And then there's also some other controls, you know, we can add gravity, let's say negative 9.81. And this gravity is accurate to like real world scale. So negative 9.81 would be correct. Let me turn the duration up so you can actually see the gravity. You can see they're falling with proper acceleration and everything. And you can see it's pretty performant as well. Even with all of these Suzanne's, I'm still running at a, a pretty good frame rate. That's all you need to know about Auto Trail. Uh, the links are in the description for both Blender Market and Gumroad if you would like to download it. I hope you enjoy.